the street I'm walking to get up to the Art Nouveau area, but this looks very much like it probably looks sometime in the late 19th century. almost seems to suggest a transition between these newer four-story buildings with a nice corner, the older apartment units, and then the really older, older wooden buildings, including on this side of the street. I don't know if this gray ominous building is Art Deco or not, but they sure didn't anticipate what pollution would do to the outside of it. We've walked about 10 blocks at least from the markets to find this first chunk of graffiti that's so well known called the Gray Rainbow. What exactly it symbolizes is unknown to me. Got some strange details like this lollipop stick sticking through its nose. These fork type utensils or whatever. Just in a neighborhood of restored old high rises. This is an interesting, not only design so far as shape, but the surface uh, treatment in the form of design and whatever it is they're using. It almost looks like a tile, I can't be sure. Hmm. There's one big recreational park with a beautiful, uh, I guess, a skateboard track that you can use for bikes, roller skates, and skateboards. How much fun is that? And here another skateboard. You can practice riding those handrails. A woman testing her skills. Way to get used to riding the dips and doodles on a dirt bike. Theoretically is where we are at now. And what we will be looking at. Looks like an old man, or at least a priest type with a, or yoga with a long beard and a sword. Man to the left holding an instrument. I can't tell from the caps what their culture is. Man on the right, again, can't tell what he's holding on to. Or do I know what the belt symbolizes that wraps around this image three times, changing color generally from red to yellow? Looks similar to, but not the same as, a swastika. Notice it's apparently set in a rural forest scene near a river, which could be this river nearby, since that's the name that's on the drawing. And then this is the end, or at least one end of the belt. The other end of the belt being in the upper right-hand corner. You see what seems to allude to the Nazi symbol. The use of that symbol or the communist sickle to um, advance the cause of that philosophy is prohibited, outlawed in Latvia for obvious reasons. Interesting older wooden building with some very nice architectural details. I wonder what that little gizmo up there was for. What'd they hang from it? Maybe a business sign? The house I saw I think in either Kaunas or I think it was in Kaunas. Uh, this balcony device has the benefit of being able to look either way down the street as well as look at me across the street. I wonder what the two pointy white domes on the top were supposed to symbolize in a 
well embellished building. Let's take a look at some of that uh, statuary relief up on top. Looks like a young boy, a couple of children. Maybe this was some kind of a school. Looking my way back towards Old Town, probably another eight or ten major blocks to go. You can imagine what this neighborhood was like in the heyday. Detail on the entryway of that last building in that last clip. Maybe this is called Art Deco, but my mind suggests more like Baroque. Another interesting chunk of design. Apparently revered artist. A couple of old looking structures as I work my way towards the Art Nouveau part of town. That's a lovely Gothic style church, isn't it? This mural is interesting. It seems to show a cityscape from fairly high above in a helicopter view. All looks normal down at the bottom and in the middle. But as you get up to the top, there's that chunk it looks like it's exploded right out of the ground. They're an interesting mix of the modern and the old. As we work our way towards Art Deco Street. We have arrived. This street is predominantly Art Deco, apparently, so we'll see what we can see. So, my first impression is that Art Deco in this form must be the splattering of the front of a building with all kinds of detail and a few statues. This darker building next door, my impressions are less filigree type of detail and more what the designer might have thought of as substantial details such as faux columns and perhaps usable, although small, balconies. Fairly bright, large building. Balanced with a classic symbol of power in many cultures. Further reflected in this detail, that looks like kind of a graphic version of either a griffin or a lion. Does that imply the god or goddess Mercury? Interesting to look at the slight variations in color. This one undergoing some restoration seems to have on that upper balcony either statues or pillars of some sort. I wonder if this was the original color scheme. Kind of somber and more utilitarian government administration look. The last one looks interesting, particularly up above. This one, for some reason, seems more Germanic to me. For whatever reason, my brain says that. I think that's clearly Art Deco in between the windows. A curious allusion to just a simple house balcony. 
Don't know if we can see anything in the graphic. We can't fully appreciate this building because it's undergoing restoration. But if the top of those two full columns on either side of the entryway vertically are an indication, it must be very interesting. Almost looking like a torch. what the open mouth symbolizes. I've seen it before. Huh. 